Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. God has given us unlimited treasures in his word. Every time we open it, we can discover a new treasure or admire an old one. What will we find today? Let's dig in. Here's Carla Early with Treasure Hunt in the Word. If you're new to the Christian life, you'll know there's lots of Christian-specific language that's not used anywhere else in the normally speaking English language. Even if you've been in the church all your life, you'd probably find it difficult to explain some terms used in the Bible. Yet the concepts behind these terms are the foundation of our salvation, so they're definitely treasures. Through a study with my mom's small group, I realized the importance of not only knowing and having a working knowledge of what each of these terms mean, but having a heart understanding of them. It's the difference between being able to explain to someone what they mean and getting excited about them and praising the Lord for his plan. The first word is propitiation. But first off, we need to go back to the garden where sin entered the world and death by sin. Everyone and everything coming into the world is tainted by this. There's no getting around it. We're born into a fallen, sinful state. But this didn't take God by surprise. He already had a plan. Romans 5 says, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sinned, death reigned from Adam to Moses. By the one man's offense, many died. Much more, the grace of God and the gift by the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. For by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. Remember how Romans 3.23 says the wages of sin is death? Well, God didn't create us so that we would all die and be separated from him forever. He had a plan to satisfy the requirements of getting us back into his presence. That's where propitiation comes in. It means appeasement or satisfaction. The only thing that would satisfy the debt sin caused was death. So God sent his son Jesus to die. Romans 3.25 says that it was Jesus whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness because in his patience God had passed over the sins that were previously committed. That reminds me of Passover, a beautiful picture of what Jesus did, which is why God had Jesus die at Passover so we could see the symbolism side by side. The blood of the spotless lamb spread on the doorposts by faith appeased the death angel, just as Jesus' blood accepted by faith satisfied the requirements of the law. As 1 John 2, 2 says, He himself, Jesus, is the propitiation for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the whole world. Jesus was the blood on the doorpost for whoever believes. But here's my favorite verse about propitiation. 1 John 4.10 In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sin. Unlike the Passover lamb, Jesus gave his blood willingly because he loved us. He satisfied the demands of the law, and he was the only one who could. He did what all those lambs killed every year couldn't do. They only symbolized what was coming, his atoning sacrifice for all generations before and all generations after. Propitiation means Jesus satisfied the wrath of God by his death and reconciles us or brings us back to God so that we can have a relationship with him. And praise the Lord, only he could do that. God loved us that much. How will you thank him for his propitiation today? You can contact us at treasurehuntintheword at gmail.com. We'd love to hear the treasures God has given you through his word. You can listen to other episodes at our website, which you can find in the description below. Thanks for listening, and remember, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also.